So this may be the last video. I have everything I need now to move this second battery. Uh, I'm going to move it over to the right hand side of the distribution panel. I'm going to give myself the 15 inches that I'm supposed to have uh, for clearance. And uh, I'm going to permanently install it there. Uh, I have the EMT conduit to run uh, the battery cables and I'm going to also loop the uh, solar panel DC through the distribution box on top of that battery and into that one just because there's not really a way to go behind it or under it or around it so I'll just go uh, through that conduit box um, but I got the wall put back together you know got the got it taped and mudded and sanded off smooth primed and painted to match so now my whole wall all matches again and uh, I got the trim boards up uh, so now it's just a matter of uh, shutting down the power to the batteries so that I can uh, disconnect that one and get it moved over into the right place get it mounted to the wall get the conduit box on top and then figure out the size of the conduit and all of those bits and pieces um, so I'm gonna do this in kind of pieces and then piece it together so forgive me if I repeat myself uh, since it's not gonna be one continuous video but uh, that that's kind of where I'm at right now uh, I'll do another little clip once I have the battery uh, moved over and a little bit farther along. All right, let's get going. So I've got this end done on the cable. Uh, I bought the connectors from Signature Solar. The cable uh, I bought from wire and cable your way it is I don't know how well you can see that it is welding cable 2 aught but this is like the higher end welding cable uh, it's got a real thick shielding multi-stranded wire and it's rated for 600 volts 300 amps so right now uh, I'm just running uh, one positive and one negative the total length on the cable is seven feet I've measured them off and I'm making them exactly the same length and uh, I got a crimp hydraulic crimp kit uh, that I'm using to crimp the connectors on but uh, Hopefully the, this is enough. If I start seeing a problem with the batteries being out of balance, uh, I really don't expect it to happen. But if it does, then uh, I will add another cable. I have enough uh, wire. I bought enough that I could do it. This is the crimper. The only thing that I would say, uh, these are the dies are metric. Uh, I'm using a 70 there's not a 60 so there's a 50 and then there's a, a 70 it really needs a 60 but the 50 is too small uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't work well I tried that first and I moved to the 70 and I'm just you know based on the thickness of the jaws I'm able to get two crimps on on that connector and that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm putting two crimps on it. I'll show you one here in a minute. So I have the cable cut uh, to the right length. Like I said, I'm making it exactly seven feet, both of them, the positive and the negative. And I've laid it out and I've marked it so that I can get the connectors lined up so that I don't, when I connect up the two batteries I don't have any twist in the in the cable uh, I mean you could twist it 
but I'm, you know, old habit, I guess. Uh, if you have the opportunity, you know, put it together to where there's not not any twist in the cable. So uh, I'm gonna strip this back and uh, crimp it, and uh, I'll show you that here in a minute. So I just used a razor knife to cut back the insulation. As long as you're really careful, uh, don't cut into the copper wire. Uh, the, the way I kind of do it is I, I make a I make sure I got a, a nice even cut around it, just partially into the insulation, and then uh, I I bend the cable as I cut. And as you get close to the copper, it'll kind of give way so you don't have to cut like, you don't have to force the knife all the way down. Um, you don't wanna, you don't wanna cut into your copper wires. So that's kind of the way I do it. Uh, make sure you put your, the back of your connector and uh, this, this is to, to seal it up, you know, for, for the weather. But make sure you get those on there before you crimp it. Otherwise, uh, when you do the second one, you you would be kind of stuck. The first one, if you make a mistake, you can always slide it on the other end. But on the second one, uh, you would be kind of stuck with it. Uh, I'm going to crimp this thing on here now. So that's it. That's the other connector. I decided not to heat shrink this side. But uh, that's ready to go in. So get this, get the two battery cables installed, and I got to reroute my. Uh, I got a the DC inputs from from the solar panels. Uh, so that's the other piece I got to rework to get this all to lay in there like I want it. But uh, more to follow. Well, that took a while, but uh, that's it. Uh, the only thing, I didn't have a Cat6 cable long enough to go up and through the conduit and back down. So I, uh, I ran one around the backside for now it needs to be about a foot longer so that I can run it up and through the conduit box and once I have that done I can put all the covers back on but the panel has its 15 inches of clearance on either side uh, the conduit doesn't stick out more than six inches uh, from from the from the wall so those codes I meet, uh, we won't talk about any of those codes. Uh, if you want to harass me about them, I guess you can. Uh, but the issues I have in that corner won't go away until the water heater dies and I replace it. And when I do that, I will move it and give myself more space. And yes, I will fix the way the gas inlet is done on it. I know that freaks a bunch of people out. Whatever reason, North Carolina uses copper uh, tubing for gas line. And uh, it was at my last house, which was built in 2007. This house is older. It's 22 years old. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the rationale is behind uh, allowing uh, copper for the gas natural gas lines, but that's what they do here. And this water heater, I looked at the date on it. It is 22 years old and not leaking and still working, but. My guess is it don't have that many years left in it, and when it goes, it bites the dust. I will redo how the water heater is done and give myself space uh, for the battery and all of that kind of stuff. 
But as far as the solar journey goes, this is pretty much the end. Uh, other than getting a land cable and getting the covers put on, uh, I mean, all of my inspections are done and passed. I'm selling back to the grid. Uh, you know, I've, I've already, uh, you know, seen a reduction in my utility bills. Uh, this month, it looks like I'm pretty much going to zero it out. The panels are 450 watt bifacial panels. And so they're, I got 20 of them. So we're looking at 9,000 watts if you were getting 100% out of them. And I've seen over 10. I've even seen 11,000 watts. Uh, coming out of the panels so I'm happy with that uh, so far no issues with the inverter two batteries will right now when I'm not running the air conditioner two batteries will run the house the whole night so I may have like an hour where I run off a grid and then it and then it needs and then the sun comes up and you know we're all off and running again but uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, uh, unless unless I add more panels, which I'm thinking about, or, or do some other modifications, I probably am not going to have many more videos uh, on on this. If something goes haywire and you know uh, something breaks, and uh, I'll need to do an update, but. So far, everything is running like it's supposed to, and I'm happy with it, and it's cutting my bill more than what I had expected, but uh, once we get into the summer months and the AC is cranking, uh, we'll see uh, how well it's able to keep up. But for now, I'm happy, and like I say, uh, for all of the folks that want to yell at me about code violations, uh, you can go ahead and make your comments. Uh, but I weighed all of my options and this was about the best I could come up with without a major remodel and that ain't happening. I ain't spending that money. When the water heater dies, uh, I'll do something, something different. Until then, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you got questions, post them and I'll try to get answers to you. Thank you.